Hi, and welcome to Strut and Ballo. And today I'm really delighted to be joined by my friend Mel Wiggins, who I thought it was funny. I was thinking about how I came across you, and actually, uh, you're an internet friend, and you're the first internet friend that I've actually written a personal email to going, Can I be your friend, please? <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting that email like this time last year. Yeah, yeah. funny. Because so I am. Um, I was, it was Paula McGurdy, the artist down in Dublin, who was, who was an old, old friend of mine. And she posted something on Instagram about an assembly gathering. And I remember nearly, I mean, I, it was one of those kind of squirrel moments, you know, like, oh my goodness, what? There's creative women in Northern Ireland and, I, and I'm not there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so she was the one who sort of put me in touch with you. So, but Tell us a little bit, for those who don't know who you are and how fabulous you are, <laughs> tell, uh, tell us all. Yeah, thanks so much. I am Mel and I am married to Dave and I have two kids, Levi and Ada, who are seven and two, respectively. Um, so that's a busy part of my life. I also um, run a small charity project called Freedom Acts that looks at issues of human trafficking and exploitation here in Northern Ireland and we work to prevent that by working with uh, vulnerable communities. Um, and I also run my own business which is gatherings and sessions and a members community for creative women in Northern Ireland called Assembly. So yeah. And that's, that's, I mean that's all really it's all special but it's so funny how like both those things, the Freedom Acts and Assembly, they would seem in many ways to be sort of two different things, two different parts of your brain in a way. But the the driving sort of uh, value, I guess, is is that empowerment, empowering. Is mm -hmm. that, would that the right? Absolutely. I was just thinking about that actually. Was it this morning or last night? And thinking about how there's so much alignment in those two things, and I've battled with how different they are in the output at times mm -hmm. so you know my job with freedom acts is a couple of days a week and i'm in an office and we run sessions we deliver training to professionals on identifying the signs of trafficking and stuff and then assembly is all about these beautiful tables and these yeah. warm yeah. intimate yeah. gatherings of women that can talk about their fears and their the barriers to living their whole true selves and um and all of it is down to upholding the value and worth of people mm. yes yeah well, the work with freedom acts the work with assembly and the women that um i get to meet and be part of this community with it's all about um do you see how valuable you are do you see how much you've got to give the world um yeah so they are um, very similar in message <laughs> and when it, when it comes to assembly how did that begin for you when you were, when, when you, was it just a one-off, just I'm going to do this or did something lead up to it or how did it begin? I don't know. I guess I'm such a, I'm such a like face-to-face -face person and always for me, the goal is to get, get people in a room. So mm -hmm. I, I love online life. I love the kind of interaction, but I don't love it more than meeting people. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't love it more than sitting down at a table with somebody or whatever. So, um, I think I'd just been coming across all these amazing women and engaging with them online and wanted to create a way that we could do that face to face because I think there's so much unspoken, there's so much nuance, there's so much um, to share when you get together that I think is lost behind a screen. And um, so I, it literally was me going, I'd love to have like a beautiful dinner with some of these women that I've met online. And Northern Ireland being Northern Ireland and being everything's in, and everyone is pretty much in really easy proximity. So yeah, um, yeah. I just, I just sent an email out to about 10, 12 of those women and said, would you be up for this kind of experimental, have a dinner and a workshop type thing? Um, I'm really, I'd really like to do it in an orchard. This was my, my first idea. I'd really like to do it in an orchard. <laughs> because um, I live in Orchard County and we have and it was kind of coming into this season of the year um apple season and uh thankfully they were all really up for it even though it was a bit random um <laughs> but I had no idea what I was doing at all and um a lovely girl called Grace who is a, a event stylist 
came on board um, from Grace and Saviour and helped me out with making it beautiful and um, making it really special. And so we did that. It was kind of a crazy couple of days organizing that one orchard we planned to do it in fell through it the last like literally the night before and we had oh, to change no. it yeah it was crazy and um but it was just and I still kind of look back to that night as like really magical like it mm. was honestly it was it was such a magical night like the apple trees were so like heaving it was it we had beautiful lights and it was chilly and we were all just it all just felt very magical. I think none of us had, a lot of us hadn't met before. Right. And so it was just, uh, yeah, it was special. It was really special. And I think from there, I just felt like there was appetite. Yeah. Um, and thought maybe we could do this more regularly. Um, and from there, we kind of had, I think it's four or five more big gatherings since then. And then it's just kind of developed from there. And I've kind of just been, led by what I've sensed people are interested in and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So it's developed and it's a, what's interesting, like it's also given other people a chance to share their work. Like the one uh, the gathering I went to at the edible flower, um was it the edible flower? The um Erin and uh Joe, their so. farm at uh, that I mean it was just fantastic because we got to see first of all we got to taste Erin's food, which is amazing mm -hmm. and see how Joe grows her vegetables and everything, which is incredible. But then the Infinity Farm workshop mm. with the beeswax and just, uh, and uh, what I love was the banquet. I mean, mm. the table dressing, all just those attention to, attention to detail. It's so funny. It actually reminds me of my mum. My mum used to do women's breakfasts at our church. Oh, yeah. And she used to go to huge lengths to make it really... Uh, really beautiful mm -hmm. because we don't get an awful lot of that and it feels very luxurious actually yeah um, I love that I, that's yeah. like my favorite part is thinking about and, and, and my favorite moment of that experience is often when people walk into the room and they see the table and they just feel like oh this is I have needed this or yes yeah this is beautiful I feel relaxed and ready to yeah and we even had new newborn babies that, that, that to other women and yeah we we had newborn babies at the at that one which was yeah. amazing yeah. I, I know i i mean i've always tried to make it accessible for especially like breastfeeding moms who just so in that season just really want to be part of things like that but feel like they just can't yeah uh, yeah yeah um, yeah, I mean, my the very first assembly in the orchard, my baby was only like nine months old, and so she was there. And my mom, my mom, who's who's not alive anymore, but she was there, and she had her in like a little cottage on the side for most of the night, and then would bring her to me to breastfeed, and then oh. back and forth because I was just, you know, like I, she couldn't have been left on her own at that stage. But um, babies are welcome for sure babies are welcome i just want mothers to feel like especially it's not like a crash or anything but <laughs> no, i know but it's it's a, but it's a lovely warm enveloping supportive environment and that's what's really special about it so where did this where did this drive to this compassion and this desire to empower come from though is that something that's always i mean obviously setting up freedom acts all that's obviously been something that's yeah. driven you but, but where did, where did, was there a starting point for that for you? It's a big DNA thing in our family, really? I think. Really? You know, I come from a family of, you know, both my parents were involved in social work and church work and um, with the Salvation Army, which is both okay. charity and church. And so I kind of grew up with a lot of, a lot of people um, that were different to us in our lives, a lot of understanding of need, um and that kind of thing so I think you know for for me it's just not it's just not something that's ever not been on my radar is yeah. this idea of we're kind of here to, to do something better for yeah. other people and to to make things better so um and with that comes like a really uh <laughs> fine line of self-righteousness <laughs> um I don't I know if 
there are, we have a favorite writer, Sarah Bessie. Mm. And she talks about, you know, her, her savior complex. Um, so. you, know, having to, you know, go out there and save the world. It's lovely that, that we can laugh about it. <laughs> because I recognize I'm, it. I'm very aware, aware of it. I'm very yeah. aware of my moral yeah. high ground. And, <laughs> I, you know, I have to kind of curtail that sometimes because not everyone is as interested in things like that as me and that's okay um but i'm i don't know if you've done any i know that i know that we've talked about this but the enneagram oh yeah yeah, yeah. personality typology stuff has been so fast fascinating for me over the last couple of years and i'm a type one which is a reformer yeah um which is very much as well what's that perfectionist as well is another one a reformer so um very critical thinking both about myself and about the world, um, mm -hmm. which is why I seek to improve, improve, improve myself yeah. and the world, yeah. and um, to understand kind of where things are wrong and want to try and make them right. So that's, and the danger of that, and the unhealthy part of that is the self-righteousness and being overly critical of, of other people and things. Um, but when I'm healthy, it's a gift, you know, to be yeah. able to see. It's so funny because when I first just came across the Enneagram, which for anybody who doesn't know, the Enneagram is like a personality typing system. Very, very ancient, very, very wise. Yeah. And what's nice, it's not static. So there are nine numbers, nine personality types. But on within those, there's a spectrum, which I, I found, because I'd done the whole Myers-Briggs and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But what I loved about the Enneagram is that idea that you, that you there's a mm. spectrum of, unhealthiness and healthiness and that's kind of that, yeah. there's somewhere to go there's somewhere to go yeah. into but i identified as a one initially when i was testing and i yeah. thought i was a one and i yeah i was like yeah i'm a one but then, but then the perfectionism kind of thing wasn't really there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually another thing that richard Rohr says he's he's one of the masters of of the enneagram he and he's a one as well interestingly yes he says that the the number that you resist most is probably the number that you are. And every time I came to three, I was like, no, not me. <laughs> I initially, that's so funny because I initially thought I was a three. Oh, is that funny? Wow. And those two, those two seem to be the most kind of numbers that that people misunderstand themselves as. Yeah. yeah. Because um, I think they're both active. When you think of yourself as somebody yeah. who does stuff, a doer, yeah, you can definitely. think. It, that you're a one or a three They're both but, high achieving very high achieving numbers and yeah. but i think it's the motivation behind each right. number so yeah the, yeah. You know, the desire, <laughs> yeah the desire for success or the desire to do like the right moral thing um, <laughs> is the difference between them and i definitely still feel an affinity to that success thing i definitely do that's not I think that's a human thing, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely feel more connected to that, like, what's the right thing? You, yeah. know, what the, yeah. you know, what's the thing that's going to bring the greater good? And, and uh, am I good? All of those yeah. existential yeah. 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 melts. But yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's been fascinating, uh, that journey of learning about that and, and in relationships and all that kind of stuff as well. And married to a six. Wow. Um, and so there's so much learning to do between that yeah I, the, actually I, I mean the Enneagram is something that I've been delving into over the last two years and um, I'll leave links on the website actually for people to sort of look mm -hmm. at them more because it, it's really fascinating and actually my husband Simon and I have found it like it's been a godsend really so helped. just in terms of understanding myself and himself he's a nine and I'm a three so that can either be really, really amazing and great, or it can be toxic as all get out. <laughs> Some of our really good friends, she's a three and he's a nine. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's fair. That is interesting. Um, I'll maybe hook you up with them, and they're really, they're really into it. They're really like. Oh well, yeah, I think I need to meet them because yeah, it's it's. But it, what it's what's great is understand once you know a little bit more about the different numbers, different personality types, it's. It's not so, it's not that you go, oh, you're just being such a nine. It's more that, oh, okay, you're doing that because this is how you see the world. Right. There's so much empathy and compassion that can, mm -hmm. be, that can be grown from it. 
Can be. Can be. <laughs> <laughs> you can also use it as a stick to beat them with. Sure you, sure you can. Um, we talk about Dave, Dave being, be, being so sexy. <laughs> Instead of so sexy, you're so sexy. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah I, well, but, but it has been incredible where mm. I have found myself in a spin about something about um, my self-worth because as a, as a three, my uh, motivation is to succeed and my greatest fear is failure. Right. And so that can pu push me to when I'm at my edge, that can be a really scary place to be. And the awesome thing about Simon being a nine, which is the peacemaker, mm -hmm. is that he's able to kind of see the bigger picture. Right. And give me a bit of perspective because he can see different people's perspectives, different points Minds of view. Very objective, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it's been amazing, actually, where he can, you know, he can listen. Mm -hmm. He's a really good listener and hear me go bananas and then go, uh huh, okay, it's awful that you feel this way. But here's the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And it's been, that's been really powerful, actually. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's really helpful to understand each other in that way, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So just wrapping up, because I know you've got small children and I've got to go get, do school runs and stuff like that. <laughs> um, I work downstairs. <laughs> um, just about movements. Tell us about movements. This is your mm. new embarkation and offer yeah. the world. So movements... Um, is something that I've been thinking about doing for a while. It's a group coaching course as part of Assembly that I'm going to be leading throughout the month of October. Um, and we're going to be starting off with a day retreat at my house. Um, <laughs> at my house. Which I'm, You're so brave. I would never do that. <laughs> well, this is where my like one. Your oneness. It's going to be like my husband is going to hear about it for a good few days leading up to this um you better but, one out, actually <laughs> um i'm gonna have to book a cleaner and uh yeah so it's gonna start with a day retreat a lovely day retreat where we're gonna um meet the group it's gonna be a small group um of women up to eight spaces i've filled five of those already there's only three left um but it's for really for women who have either just feel stuck or they just feel like their fear and their uh, and the, the, the their fear and their self-doubt is crippling their ability to move forward and they're really looking for a space to dive into this stuff with other women that also want to do that that want to come up with fresh stories about who they are that want to come up with um ways to move through fear that want to develop practices that really help them to understand themselves and understand how they work in the world and to not and to just kind of get rid of all the shoulds like i should have a marketing strategy i should have oh my god a blog and a, a very heavy instagram presence and to kind of tell all of that to f off and to think about actually what feels truest to them and what because really when you do the work that feels truest to you that's what connects the best so when you are forcing things in your business or in your kind of creative life because you think you should be doing it it's never really going to feel authentic and Absolutely. i want to see i want to see women find that space for themselves um and so it's, it's incredibly it's so much more powerful when you're doing something that's authentic because it connects with people. But when you're trying to push something that isn't really you, mm -hmm. it doesn't have the same uh, traction, actually. Definitely and, not. And, it's and, not uh, yeah. believable. It's not as believable and people see that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so many women are bombarded by, you should be doing this and you should you know, be using all of these hashtags and doing all of these things on Instagram and you should have regular, uh, all kinds of things. And so I'm going to use the space to present all of the options of how things look and what, what options there are to kind of get your message and what value and service you want to bring out there. Um, but really help people find the stuff that is them that doesn't feel forced and actually is just 
just truer to them. And I think what I love, you and I've talked at length about Tara Moore's work and she's one of my real sheroes. And um, so she's a coach and I've taken her online course or playing big course in Redder Book. And, oh, wow. and you've got, oh yeah, you've done the course as well. I've read that, I'm reading the book at the minute, but yeah, the, course, I just the, course, the course was, yeah. course was incredible. Um, and one of the things that is kind of her big mantra and I really resonate and this is this is essentially what the movements course is about is being more true to your desires than your fears wow, that's so in line with desire mapping isn't it so on the same track you know what do you it's all about you know it's all about feeling good and and it's funny because I wrote a blog post yesterday because it's fun you know it's brilliant. <laughs> well, it is. It's funny though that word desire. I still have a problem with it because you know, we're from Northern Ireland and Ireland. <laughs> yeah. I think there's just like it. It rings. It rings bells. It's like I can't. You know, you can't possibly. It can't possibly be about feeling good. You know, mm. it can't possibly. You can't possibly be allowed, mm. or you can't allow yourself to desire or to enjoy pleasure or, or you know if you're gonna work it has to be grind you know and just like what it's it's so um it's so toxic and it's so patriarchal and like look at all the men it is grand to dust do you know what i mean and women as well but mm -hmm. yeah like like it's yeah. really it's interesting it's it is powerful and i think that we there are so many things that we are full of fear about that we don't don't even know is manifesting as you know it's it's manifesting differently but it's based in fear and not in not desire and not a kind of authenticity and um and I just want I just want to get to the root of that with people and um I think it's a great opportunity to do that in a small group and uh, there's something yeah. like magical about doing that with a small group of women who can support and nurture you through that process and it's so amazing to see how like my, in my own experience of doing group courses how just the sounding board and the connection with a small group of other women who are journeying their own stuff as well but have such have such empathy and support to give is is magic it, it really well, is what's really special about this movement is that is that first day where you're actually all together because there's there's a big online component yeah. But that physical connection, it will be so powerful at, yeah. the, at that right at that point to be starting on that journey together. Yeah. Um, so I want to do, I want to, we're going to have an opening day where we're going to really connect flesh, flesh and bones kind of connection, which is, as you said, super important to me for sure. I know that's really important. Um, and it's just great that we can. And mm -hmm. then the rest of the course will run through October online and then my intention is that we have a final kind of meet up at the end of the month lovely yeah. so it won't be like a it won't be like a full day but like an evening yeah. where we can come back to my house and kind of talk through our our thoughts and process and progress of the month and what kind of what our movements have been what are what has shifted what has moved for us yeah. um, and what happens what happens next how do we develop this from there so yeah. I'm excited. The women that have signed up already, I'm just like buzzing about. They're just brilliant women and they've got, they're so brave. I just think it's a brave thing to sign up for something like this. And um, well, it's, yeah, it's actually owning, owning your stuff and owning and taking the opportunity to, you know, <clears> step into and face up to the things that hold you back. That's like, that is massive, actually. That is big. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. far easier to just stay stuck. <laughs> even if it's painful yeah it's but there's, this, is, this is what um Brene Brown talks about when in um is it Daring Greatly where she talks about how unused creativity isn't benign it must <laughs> it metastasizes into grief and rage and all yeah. kinds of other negative emotions that are really really detrimental to us and uh, which are carcinogenic <laughs> let's face it I mean so much of our modern day, you know, so much of our illnesses, you know, definite, there, there's got to be a correlation between what we do to ourselves emotionally and how that. Yes, absolutely. We're body, mind and spirit. It's all connected. 
There's an amazing uh, woman called Lucy Pierce who lives in West Cork. She has Womancraft Publishing. Um, mm -hmm. And her new book is uh, coming out. She wrote a book called Burning Woman, which was really kind of on fire. <laughs> you know, like burn down the patriarchy, but in a really kind of, not an angry way, but in just really embodying that sort of, um, sort of archetype of the fiery woman and mm -hmm. really opening that. But this book is is in um, is a companion piece. It's called Medicine okay. Woman, and it's coming out soon. And it's it's all she, you know she's going to be delving into all of that of like what happens when we don't deal with our stuff and what it does to our bodies and how intricately re related they are. And, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's mm. it's important. It's our it's our lives. Yeah. You know, it's our lives. It's you know, we get we've such a bleeding time to do the important things that are important to us. Um, and I know it's not as simple as that and we all have responsibilities and we all have you can't give what you don't have. Like if you're if you're if you're broken and if you're if your body is sick, there's very little that you can give to anyone, you know? Mm -hmm. you, and it's a mastery. You're... We're we're not we're constantly trying to master or, you know, figure out what the best way to do that is in whatever season of life we're in. And we don't get it right. And we'll have times where it's not, where, you know, where we are broken or we need to be broken and, and that's okay. Um, I think that's okay. But I think it's the self-awareness and the resilience, I guess, that I'm really interested in is the yeah. resilience of people who are, uh, willing to give it another go and mm -hmm. and be more true to their desires than their fears. That's so great. Mm -hmm. Don't get shivers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yummy. I love, I love getting to talk to people like about this stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. and you're just yeah. such a talent at unearth in that. I'm excited for you. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it. I was saying to somebody recently. They said, you know, how long have you been up here in Northern Ireland? And I said, it's been a year. I mean, it's just amazing. It's kind of and they said, and, and, and how is it? <laughs> yeah. Have you, how has it been? Are they weird? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, um, but it, it really has been the most incredible time in my life. And the you've most incredible. Weird. Like you've sold out shows. And I know. I know. And there's stuff in the pipeline from the ladies that brought the vagina monologues, but that's all. Yeah. Read it out of it. It's very yeah, but, um, but yeah, but just the sense, it's just that sense of being right in the right place where you're supposed to be is so powerful. And I really feel that. And I feel that for the first time in my life. It's amazing. And it's, it's really weird that it's in Northern Ireland. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Tell me about it. I didn't think I would end up here. Look what these men do to us. I was in London, living life, and never thought I'd be back here. And well, here it's I, funny. I, I couldn't be happier to be back here. I love yeah. it here. I really do. What, I, what, is, what is so lovely is the energy of resurgence and, I mean, like you said, resilience. But when you think of everything that this area has been through, this province has been through, over such a long time to be to be seeing such shoots of growth and creativity mm -hmm. and art and uh, warmth and compassion and love and support I mean, it's just incredible Mind that, blowing. you know you know for so long you'd you'd be thinking oh northern ireland oh no it's all a bit you know scary there's all that stuff going on over there but mm -hmm. What's really truer, much truer about this place is the, mm. is the support and the love and the resilience and the, and I, and you know, I'm sorry, but I will never, ever get tired of the, of the black humour. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. We can be super dark here, can't we? I mean, we've earned it. Yeah. So right. did. So did. So did. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to let you go. Mel, thank you so much for this lovely chance. Absolutely, and, um, pleasure. And uh, yeah. I, where can we go to find out about movements and assembly and all that? What's the yep? What There's the, if you go to melwiggins.com, it's all on there. You'll see an assembly tab, and all the movement stuff is there. And um, you can sign up to my newsletter, and you'll get kind of first information about that stuff. 
Um, and I actually, I'm, I highly recommend signing up to the newsletter because I love your newsletters. They come. Oh, it's, 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 I do. It's your. It's the way you talk as well. But you write how you talk, and it's that lovely, soothing. Hi, friend. You know, it's just. Oh, it's <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, do sign up. I, I love it too. I don't really blog as much anymore, um, but I love writing the newsletter. It's really um, when I get the time to do it. It's it is cathartic. Really nice. So well, yeah, you can. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna put press pause on record now so all right see you soon take care Thank you. Bye.